time in their history, a manpower crisis is forcing the Marines to ask how much pain they can inflict if they want to appeal to the recruits they so desperately need. Some believe the only way is the hard way. What you've had this week in the form of corrective PT has been a progression, and it continues to progress to get harder and longer. Others think the hardship is too much to handle. No one likes to be spoken to like a piece of shit. No one likes that, and uh, no one can take it. That is your problem. You're doing what you think is right and not what you're being told to do. How many of the 53 recruits we start out with will make it through the pain barrier? of what we do here is inherently dangerous. We have lost in the last four and a half, maybe five years, four people. Um, two of them were congenital heart failures. Uh, and so tragically, they may well have died in whatever walk of life they were in at that stage. Um, the other two were training accidents. Uh, one was heat exhaustion, tragically on the 30 miler. Uh, and the other uh, was a drowning uh, which is currently an ongoing investigation. Um, we try to make things here as safe as they can possibly be. Every fortnight, a new batch of recruits arrives at Limpston in Devon to begin the 30-week Royal Marine Commando course. One line along here. 30th of August, 1999, and 53 young men arrive for their first day of training. Our boys are joining in troubled times. Too many recruits are opting out of training and there are disagreements about how to stop the rot. My name is Major Walls and I'll be a company commander for the next 30 weeks, or should I say 210 days. You are now in day one of training. You have now joined our corps and you're now going to wear our cat badge and therefore behave accordingly. Before taking the oath, is there anyone here who wishes not to attest if so, they are free to leave now. Hi, James Christopher Fletcher. Hi, Dean Patrick Elliott. Hi, Robert Jack Dunn. Hi, Kevin Robert Dyte. Hi, Jake Davis. Hi, Stephen Peter Conlon. Oh, Dad Colin. I swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and pledge true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, and that I will, as I did found, honestly and faithfully defend Her Majesty. So help me God. I think it's a leap into the great unknown. For a 16-year-old that's never been away from home before, um, the contrast between life at home where mum does his bedroom and cooking and cleaning and all the rest of it, uh, that comparison is stark. Uh, so he arrives here rather confused, very uncertain, uh, and he needs a lot of guidance and a lot of careful handling. disgusted at what I can see. Unbelievable. Therefore, you can consider yourself failed and you can also stand by. The whole troop can stand by. You're taking a piss. Point one. Accommodation is a bag of shite. Point two. In future, when we're tying this accommodation, if we say put anything in the team store, it means put it away fucking neatly. Looks like a sack of shit in there. You're dropping the standards. One thing we do not like to see are poor standards when you're left to your own devices. I was shocked at my reaction and actually turning up at the gate. I was, I was scared, basically. There's a bit of panic and shock, and it's like, hang on, if I step through that gate, that's, you know, it's going to totally change my life. So I shoved up loads of photos from when I went travelling, just to remind me of my previous life. <laughs> And uh, so it does help when I'm ironing and stuff to look up and see the photos and think, oh yeah, I remember that day. And then you just go off thinking about it. My dad was here, I could tell you, it's 20 years now. He was trained here. Um, 
when I speak to him on the phone, he says, you're not here to do it for him, I'm here to do it for myself. Uh, I know that deep in my heart that I'm here to do it for myself, but at the same point, I think to myself, well, if my dad's done it, I can do it. But no matter how hard to find it, I'm just not going to give up, no way. Recruits giving up and leaving is a real problem for the Marines, a problem which Colonel Lindley is trying to address. In theory, every man that comes here has the ability to get through training. And if that's the case, well, why is it then that 50% of them don't make it through training? Well, the bottom line is that of that 50% that go, 42% go because they don't want to be here any longer. And maybe that's where the work needs to take place. The recruits are out on their first exercise where every day begins with a kit inspection. You were told 0800. Five minutes before means 0755, which means you have one minute. I suggest you get everything laid out, stand perfectly still, at ease with your weapon across your shoulder. It's too late to clean it now, just place it out. Everyone, look on the floor. I was a young lad, a 16 year old, when I joined up, and uh, it was certainly much stricter then than it is now. I was brought up straight with a disciplined background. I was trained strict with a disciplined background and I think that's why I've stayed the way I am. What's in there? Mud and dirt, isn't it? Couple, sad. Down, stop banging them out. But remember at this stage, that was sergeant, not a corporal. Your boots polished? No, sergeant. No. Right, and as your feet are your mode of transport, I suggest we look after them. You haven't done it, have you? Why not? Do you know better? No? If you haven't cleaned your weapon. What's the state of that? You haven't cleaned your boots. I'll tell you what, you can't be bothered. Let's put the effort in. We'll get the effort out of you. You have two minutes. Pack your kit, get on the flank. Arms above your head. Hey, Bert, sir! Up to the tent. Do not rest your weapon. Those who failed the inspection and been put on the flank are taken off for corrective training, known to the recruits as a beasting or a thrashing, a tried and tested method for sorting out the strugglers. One straight line facing me. OK, man. Pays to be a winner, doesn't it? Yeah? Everybody remember where checkpoint one was last night? That tree down there? Yeah? It pays to be a winner. Go. Get up, lunatics. Don't break your leg. The idea of this is to tell them not to do what they've done again this morning. This is about the third time this week that they've been picked up for not doing their administration. We can't stress enough to them how important it is to do personal administration. If they can't look after themselves at this early stage, then they're going to be a liability to everybody else. Yes, this may seem an archaic or a rather vicious or painful way of dealing with things. But they've got to understand that this will be so painful that it will give them the kick at the backside they need to say to themselves, right, I'm going to start working at the level required and I'm not going to get picked up again. And then I would say 50, 60, maybe even 70% of these will not get picked up again after this. Those that do are obviously in the wrong business and then we'll weed them out. About turn, all of you, you lot, about turn, round court will cast it in back again. Told you it pays to be a winner. If you put as much effort in as they did, you wouldn't be doing it again. Go. Problem? Problem? <coughs> Problem? No? Right, carry on then. What I encourage all the instructors here to do is, is balance discipline with compassion and understand what is going on in the mind of the real young recruit. So, for example, if we're out on exercise and the troop decides that actually it's not very happy and it, and it doesn't produce the goods on the inspection in the morning or whatever the cereal is in the morning, um, is it actually very helpful for then the instructors to uh, seek not retribution but to implement a, a punishment to make the point to the recruits who are going through training at that time? And my argument is that it's actually not very helpful to do that. Don't think of the pain. Stand up. Get there now. Small introduction of pain, men. You can't prove at this early stage that your administration is on the ball 
then you are not worthy to carry on. And therefore,